From around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Postgres Vision 2021. Brought to you by EDB. Welcome back to Postgres Vision 21, where theCUBE is covering the innovations in open source trends in this new age of application development and how to leverage open source database technologies to create world-class platforms that are cost-effective and also scale. My name is Dave Vellante and with me is Roberto Giordano, who is the end user computing corporate and database services manager at Borsa Italiana, the Italian stock exchange. Roberto, great to have you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks Dave and thanks to the EDB friends for the invitation. Okay, and we're going to dig in uh, to the great customer story here. Uh, first, Roberto, tell us a little bit more about uh, Borsa Itali Italiana and your role at the organization. Absolutely. Well, uh, as you mentioned, Borsa is the Italian stock exchange. We used to be part of the London stock exchange, but uh, last month we left that group and we joined another group called Euronext. So we are now part of another uh, group, I could say. Um, and, and right now uh, within Euronext, Euronext provided the biggest liquidity pool in, in Europe, just to mention something. And basically we provide the market infrastructure to our uh, customers across Europe and the world world. So probably if it happens for you to, I don't know, buy a little bit of, I don't know, Ferrari, for instance, probably use our infrastructure. So I, I wonder if you could talk about the key drivers in, in the exchange business in, in Italy. I mean, it's, I don't know how closely you follow what's going on in the United States, but it's crypto madness. There's, there's uh, the Reddit, Army driving up stocks that are that are that are that have big short positions, and of course, you know the regulators have to look at that, and and there's a big debate going on. What <laughs> I don't know what the, what's it like in Italy, but what are the key drivers that are really informing the priorities for your technology strategy? Well, uh, you mentioned, for instance, the few typical cases that added a little bit of volatility to the global markets and also to, to our markets. As an IT professional uh, running market infrastructure is our first goal to provide uh, an infrastructure that is reliable and be with the um, lowest possible latency. So we are very focused on performance and reliability, just to mention the two main drivers within our systems. Well, and, and you have end user computing in your title, and we're going to get into the database discussion, but, but I presumably with, with COVID, you had to pivot, and that, that piece of your job was escalated in 2020, I would imagine. And you mentioned latency, uh, which is a key factor in obviously in, in database access, but that must have been a big challenge last year. Well, it was really a, a challenge. Basically, we moved just within a weekend the whole organization working remotely. And it has been like this since February, 2020. Think about the challenge of moving almost 1000 people that used to come to the office every day to start to work remotely. And as um, within my team of the end user computing, this was really uh, a challenge, but it was a good one. At, at the end, we, we, we succeeded and everything worked fine. From our perspective, no news is a, is a good news, you know, you know, because normally when something doesn't work, we are on, on newspapers. So if you didn't hear about us, it means that everything worked just fine. You know, it's amazing, Roberto, we're both in the technology business, you're a practitioner, I'm a I'm observer, but I mean, if you're in the tech business, most companies, actually pivoted quite well. You have always been a digital business, uh, different, I mean, if you're Ferrari and, and making cars and you can't get semiconductors, but but most technology companies actually made the transition, you know, quite amazingly. Uh, let's get into the uh, the case study a, a bit of it. I wonder if you could paint a picture of your organization's infrastructure and applications, what it looks like, and, and particularly your database infrastructure. W what does that look like? Well, we are a multi-vendor shop so we, we like to, to pick the right technology for, for the right service. This means that my database services teams uh, currently manage several different technology where Postgres plays a big role in, in, in our portfolio. And 
because we, uh, we, we currently support both the open source, uh, fully open source version of Postgres, but also the EDB distribution. In particular, we prefer to use the DB distribution where we need specific functionalities that just EDB provide, and we, when we need a first class level of support that EDB in, in, in recent year was able to provide to us. And when you say full function, are you talking about things like ACID compliance, two-phase commits, I mean, all these enterprise capabilities, uh, uh, is that right? or? Oh, maybe you could be more well, just, specific. Ju just, to mention, just to mention one, uh, for instance, we recently migrated our intra-site availability solution using the EDB failover manager. That is uh, an additional component that just ED, 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 EDB provide. Yeah, okay, so, so, so part recovery obviously is, is, and so that's a solution that you want to get from the EDB distro as opposed to having to build it yourself with open source tooling. Yeah, correct. Well, basically, historically, we used to rely on OS clustering from, from, from that perspective. But uh, over the years, we found that even if it's a technology that, that works fine, it has been around for, for, for decades and so on, we faced some challenges internally uh, because within my team, we, we don't own also the operative system layers. So we want a solution that was 100% within our uh, control and, and perimeter. So just a few months ago, we asked the EDB, EDB folks if they can provide something. And after a couple of meetings, uh, also with their uh, pre-sales engineers, we found the, the right solution for us. So quick, long, long story short, just a quick proof of concept. Few, uh, few few tests together again using the EDB uh, consultancy, and 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 then we uh, beginning of this year we we went live with the first mission critical service using this brand new technology. Well, brand new technology for us, you know, EDB created a few years ago. Right, and I do have some follow up questions there, but but I, I want to understand what catalyzed the you know what was the motivation for going with an open source data. I mean, you're a great example because you have, you're multi-vendor, so you have experience with all of it, the full spectrum. What was it about open source database, generally EDB specifically, that triggered uh, the, the choice? Well, thanks for the question. This is, this is one, of the, one of the questions that I always like. I think what really drove us was the right combination between easy to use, so simplicity, and those good value for money. So we like to pick the right database technology for the right kind of service slash budget that the service has. And, and the open source solution for a specific service, it, 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 it's, it's our uh, you know, first, first, first choice. So we are not, I'm going to say, a company that uses just one technology. We like to uh, pick the best of breed that the market uh, can offer. And in some cases, open source and Postgres in particular uh, is, is our choice. How involved was the line of business in this, the, both the decision and, and the implementation? Was it kind of invisible to them or this was really more of a technology decision based on the, your interpretation of the requirements? Uh, I'm interested in who was involved and, and how you actually got it done. Well, I, I think uh, this decision was transparent for, 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 for the business. At the end, they don't really have that kind of visibility. You know, They just provide requirements in particular in terms of performance and, and reliability. And so, uh, so this, this is something they are not really involved about. And obviously, if, they, if we are in a position to save a little bit of money, everybody's happy, even the business. So now, so what did you have to do? So that, that makes sense to me. I, I figured that was the case. Who, what were the, who were the stakeholders on your team? I mean, what kind of technical resources did, did you require and implementation resources? What, take us through what the project, if you will, looked like. What, how did you do it? Uh, well, it's a combination uh, of um, database uh, expertise. I, I, I got the pleasure to, to run a team that is paid by very, very senior, very, very skilled uh, database services uh, professional. 
that uh, are able to support more than more than one technology and also are very open to innovation and 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 changes um plus obviously we need also the development teams the relevant development teams on board when you when you run this kind of uh, transformations and it looks like also they like the idea to use postgres for uh, for this specific service uh, i got in mind so it, it it was quite quite easy uh, not big discussion you know what was the what was the elapsed time from from when you said okay we're we're in you know signed the agreement we're going here you made the decision to actually getting into production well I, I, as i mentioned we 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 run um we run services and application that uh, are really focused on uh, high availability and, and performance. So generally speaking, we are not uh, a quick organization. Also, we run a business that, that is highly regulated. So uh, as you know, as you can imagine, we are an organization that don't have a, a lot of appetite for risk, you know? so. Generally speaking, in order to run this kind of transformation is a matter of several months. I would say six, nine months to have uh, something delivered in that space. Right, okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's reasonable. I mean, if you could do it inside of a year, that's, I think, uh, quite good, especially in the highly regulated industry. And then you mentioned kind of the failover, the high availability cap cap capabilities. Were there other specific EDB tools uh, that that you you utilize to sort of address the objectives. Yeah, um, uh, absolutely. We uh, in particular we use uh, Postgres uh, Enterprise Manager, aka PAM. Okay, and very recently uh, we were involved within ADB about. Uh, I'm going to say specifically developing uh, one functionality that 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 we needed uh, back in the day. I think uh, together with Bart, uh, these are the three uh, EDB specific tools that that we that that we use right now. And, and I'm I'm interested in I want to get to the business impact. And I know it's early days for you, but the real motivation was to 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 save money, it, it, it simplify. Um, I, I would actually, I would imagine your developers were happy because they get to use modern tooling and open source, but, but really those, your industry is bottom line, right? I mean, that's really what the, what the business case was all about. But I wonder if you could add some color there in terms of the business impact that, that you expect. And then, I mean, I don't know how much visibility you have now, but anything you can share with us. Well, uh, the, the, Thinking about the uh, EFM in implementation, the, the business in impact was that uh, in case of a, a failure, the DBA team, database services team, is, a, is able to provide a solution that is within our 100% uh, within our perimeter. So this means that we are fully accountable for, for, for it. So in a nutshell, when you run a service, the less people, the less teams you have to involve, the more control you, you can deliver. And in some, again, very critical uh, services, this is a great value. Okay, so, and, and where do you want to take this? I mean, how do you see, what, what's your, if you're thinking about your Postgres and, and, and generally an EDB you know, roadmap, where do you want it to go? Well, I stay uh, to to trends within uh, within the organization. The, the 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 first one is about migrating uh, more existing services to uh, open source solution for database is going to be uh, is going to be Postgres. A another trend I see within my organization is about. Uh, designing applications natively to be to, to use Postgres as a database uh, as a database layer. I think both trends uh, are uh, more or less running at the same speed right now. You know, a lot of the audience members at, at Postgres Vision 21, they're, they're just like you, they, they're managing day-to-day -day infrastructure, they're, they're, they're expert practitioners. What advice would you give to somebody that is thinking about, you know, taking this journey? Uh, maybe if you had to, do something over again, maybe what would you do differently? How, how can you help your peers here? Well, mm, I think uh, 
in particular, if you are, I can say, a big organization that runs a highly regulated business, in some cases, you are a little bit afraid of open source because there is this, I can say, general um, consideration about the lack of enterprise level support. I, I would like to say that it is just about the past because there are around a bunch of companies like EDB that are 100% uh, capable of providing enterprise level uh, of support uh, even on, on, on even on the open source distribution of Postgres. Obviously, then if you are going to go with their specific distribution, the level of support is going to be even more accurate. But as we know, EDB currently is the I say, main contributor of the uh, Postgres community. And I think this is a, a, an insurance for every organization. So you, uh, your advice is don't be afraid, is that right? <laughs> yeah, my advice is don't is absolutely uh, don't be don't be afraid. And if if I, if I can if I can mention uh, about also about you know uh, the cloud cloud technologies, this is also another another topic where uh, if possible I would like to suggest to not being uh, afraid. Uh, EDB as every uh, as, as every I would say uh, organization within the uh, IT industry is really uh, pushing for it, and I think for a very uh, for for a lot of cases, not all of them, but a lot of cases, there is a great value about design services application to be cloud native or migrating existing application into the cloud. Okay, but, but being a highly regulated industry and being you know, very much aware of the, the narrative around open source, et cetera, you, you must have had just a little piece of your mind saying, okay, I have to manage this risk. So was there anything specific you did with managing the risk that you would advise, was it, was it, or is it really just about good change management? I, I think it was mainly about uh, good change management. When you got uh, you know the relevant stakeholders that you need uh, on board, um, and we are everybody is going in the, in, into the same direction. That basically is about executing. Excellent. Well, Roberto, I really appreciate your time and your knowledge that you share with the the audience. So thanks so much for coming on the Cube. Thank you, Dave. It was a great pleasure. And thank you for watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of Postgres Vision 21. We'll be right back.